Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you guys how to perform a molecular dynamic simulation using Gromax. So, the first step of doing a molecular dynamic simulation is that we need to prepare an initial configuration of the molecules we are interested in. And in this video, I'm going to use benzene rings at, as an example, because the molecular structure of benzene is very simple. So, the first step we need to do is open the terminal and then type the command Avogadro. So in Avogadro, we can draw any chemical structure of any molecules. But like benzene ring is such a common molecule, so uh, like it's already inside this software, we just need to look for it. Go to fragment, go to build, insert, and then fragments. And in fragments, we are going to the directory which has the name of aromatics and benzene.cml open this file now we have a benzene ring here and then the next step is we want to remove the hydrogens and add the hydrogens again and after that we want to save this file as a pdb file Now, the PDB file is saved. We can take a look using the text editor. And you can see the coordinates right here. The carbon and the hydrogen is all here. So the next thing is that we need to, because this PDB file cannot be understood by Gromax, the format, like the format of this uh, PDB file cannot be understood by Gromax, so somehow we need to rearrange a little bit of the way the coordinates of the atoms are presented. So to do that, I've already written a Python 3 program. This Python 3 program basically it will take this c6h6.pdb file as an input file and then it will regenerate a new PDB file with the name initial2.pdb and this initial2.pdb will be understood by Gromax. So let's go to the terminal and then run this Python 3 program. C6H6.pdb is our input file and the number of atoms is 12. Okay, so there's an error in the program because I haven't removed this part. This part is not necessary for the Python 3 program. So let's run this program again. 12. Okay, so now we have the new PDB file, the initial2.pdb here. And in this format, Gromax will understand. Now, in this PDB file, the most important thing is this two column and the, actually in the Cartesian coordinate, you need to get it correct. And this two column here, C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, actually is a label of the atoms. And the BEC is the, um, like the amino acid type, which will be read by Gromax, the software. So, um, but we need to, before we importing before importing this initial two dot pdb file, we need to let Gromax know what is BEC. So let's go to the directory in which I have installed Gromax. Okay. Now um, we are going to the force field folder. And in this video, I'm going to use the OPLS or Atom Force field. So it will be this directory actually. Go to amino acid.rtp. And I've or before I made this video, I have already defined what is BEC. Basically, you have the atoms here and the atom types to be OPLS145. And for the atom types of the hydrogen will be OPLS146. And how they are connected. I have defined also here and the import proportion like because if the benzene ring is rigid so uh, you should not expect any rotation of the bond 
we need to tell Gromax about that, so we define the import torsion here. And for the atom type, you actually you can find the atom type of a certain atom in this file called the atom types dot atp file here. One four five, you can see that it's benzene carbon. One four six, you can see that it's benzene hydrogen. Okay, so now we have everything. We can import the initial two dot pdb file to Gromax by typing this command gmx pdb to gmx initial two dot pdb now choose the force field you want to use which is the OPLS all atom force field and without the water now you will have a bunch of files the configuration file here configuration.gro file and the topological file here is very important and after this step we want to define a box we want to make a box for the configuration.gro file so we use this command gmx add the configuration and then input the configuration.gro file with a box of 2.2 nanometers and output a configuration2.gro file now we have a configuration 2.gro file with the box the box with a dimension of 2.2 nanometer by 2.2 nanometer by 2.2 nanometer yes so next step is that we need to minimize the system the energy of the system oh sorry before this step actually we need to put a bunch of benzene molecules in the box and in this case, there's only one benzene ring, so it's, uh, it's not good enough. We need to put several benzene ring in the box. So actually, before the add the configuration, this command, we need to run the insert molecules command here. Input the, configur uh, the configuration file, configuration file.gro, the box 2.2. Now, we have defined a box so we don't we may not need this command anymore so we define the box here and then the number of molecules we want to put in is 40 benzene ring and then we output the configuration 2.gro file let's press enter to see now successfully government successfully uh, generate a box with 40 molecules of a benzene ring in a box of 2 nanometer by 2 nanometer 2.2 nanometer by 2.2 nanometer by 2.2 nanometer. So let's take a look at this configuration to uh, .gro file with the uh, Vision Wonecker dynamic software. Now you can see Gomez has successfully packed this together in a box, and then we can also show the box. Now you can see that it's packed 40 benzene ring is packed inside a box. Now the next thing we are going to do is we want to minimize the energy. Before I make this video, I have already um, prepared the em.mdp and this file is very important. It basically contains the parameter you want in the energy minimization. And now we have this em.mdp, we can combine this with the configuration to file to generate a, a em.tpl file. Okay, does not match. So before that, we need to go to the topological file, and because now it's forty number of molecules, so here we need to change it to forty. So run this command again. It successfully generated the dm dot tpr file, and then we run. Go ahead and run the dm dot tpr file here. Nice run. It's finished. So. Then we want to look at the results of the energy minimization. And this is the result. Now give it a box. We can see the box like you can see that um, the benzene ring near the edge of the box kind of like there's some missing atom here and some missing atom when the benzene ring is so close to the edge of the box. But this is not incorrect because uh, when we do the energy minimization, we have considered the periodic boundary condition, so it's normal to have a like a fragmented benzene ring here, 
it's actually still correct because there's a periodic boundary condition. Now we have the em.gro file. We want to run a uh, molecular dynamic simulation. Like really, we are going to integrate the equation of motion. And before that, we um, because the box we made up the box, the bo uh, the density of the system may not be correct. So somehow we need to run an MPT simulation to compress the system to the correct density. But if we now, if we directly go ahead and run the MPT simulation, the system will expand, expand and expand as time like uh, keep going. It will expand and expand. The system will expand with time, and we don't want that to happen because we want to compress the system. The reason for an expansion in the system is that the force between the amount of benzene ring is so huge, is so positive that they like to compensate for that. The box has to expand. So, to, if we want to avoid that, we need to before the MPT simulation, we can run an MVT simulation without pressure coupling, such that the force among the benzene ring can be further minimized. So to do that, we need to um, prepare a new .mdp file. Basically, it's uh, just copy and paste this to here. And because there's pressure coupling here, we don't want pressure coupling. So we comment this. Now it should be OK. Save this file to md. Here. MD benzene this directory. Save it here. MVT dot MDP. OK. So combine this with the em dot GRO file, MVT dot MDP, topological file, and the em dot GRO file, and output an mvt.tpr file with a maximum warning of 1. Now we have the uh, mvt.tpr file and then we go ahead and run the mvt simulation. Now it's running. You can see it's very quick, 500 nanoseconds. It's, it's only take, uh, we, we want to have 500 picoseconds, sorry. Like it's very short, we don't need to run for a long time because like it's such a small system, it won't take uh, like it doesn't take a few nanoseconds to relax the system. Actually, just a, a f like a hundred, several hundred picosecond is more than enough. So to save time, because like it takes, it may take uh, more than five minutes, I guess. And due to that, I've already finished the simulation. Actually, now let me pause this simulation. Now these two files I've like I've before I made this video I've run the simulation and I finished um, the simulation. This is the result. So after this MVT simulation, you will get an MVT.gro file. And then you need to type this command here. The uh, file for the MPT simulation. Topological and the configuration file will be the result of the mvt.gro output the md the mpt simulation tpr here and this like the input file this one maybe mpt whatever it is um, i have this file here M md uh, mpt.mdp actually it's the same as the mvt.mdp without commenting this one the pressure coupling because we want pressure coupling to happen. Um, yeah, so I can show you the results I have. Now we don't need to run this command. It takes a long time, so I can show you the result here. The MVT simulation result first. Now it's just uh, a system with fixed volume. It's nothing too exciting. Now, yeah, you can. I can move this. Now it's just a system with a fixed volume. I'll create this. But for MPT simulation, it will be more interesting. You can you will see that the box uh, keeps sh shrinking because we have a very stable initial configuration.
Yes. Now it's zero. T equals to zero. And then I run the simulation. I run the simulation here, the animation. You can see that the box keeps shrinking. Shrinking and shrinking. And the size keeps decreasing and decreasing. And finally, it reaches certain value. And it fluctuates around that value. And this is what we want it to happen. Because if it is fluctuating, if it is fluctuating uh, around a certain um, fluctuating over a certain value, that means that value is the correct density. And then we want that correct density. Now it keeps fluctuating until the end of the simulation. It keeps fluctuating, fluctuating a bit, a bit and a bit. So after this MPT simulation, in fact, you can run another MPT simulation, like use this structure, this final configuration, and then fix the volume, and do an MPT simulation. And then you will have a benzene system with uh, the correct density. And then you can, like, perform an MPT simulation of such a correct system. Yeah, so I think this is the end of my video. I hope that this video helps you understand how to perform simulation using Gromax and other free software.